Wag back to Dubsy Bricks for another episode of Building Mandalorian Lego. Last week it was working on the living waters and the structure at the back of it. This week I'm going to be working on the Great Forge. Now at the moment I've got this as two separate bills plates. However, I want to do the same here where it's all just one. And the section at the back there, I might shrink that a little bit in size. And the reason being, I want the area inside where the Great Forge is to go back a little bit further than just one base plate but what I need to do is make sure that the base plate or the mills plate can be picked up without it breaking in the middle but also that I can have enough strength on the top to take the weight of the buildings that are going up there. So let's move these two base plates over to the table and let's get started. And here is the mills plate all ready to go so it's one large one now and I've decided to dismantle the structure entirely that was on the back here due to the fact that I was going to be shrinking it in size quite considerably I thought it was easier just to start from scratch on there the last tan area in the center here that's where the great forge is going to be and the walls on both sides I'm going to do the rock work but let's start on the structure on the back here and also build the gray wall up which will be going on the outside there because this is an edge so we're going to be using all of the um, one by four bricks that we got the other day so let's get started a good start on the support structure at the back this on top of this part here now is going to be the big blocky part that i did last time where the tower will just slot in the middle of it before i do that what i want to do is build some of the rock work along this edge just here so let's get building on the rock work and i'll check back in once we've made some progress on that just making a start on the rock work and i thought i'd just show you the technique that i'm going to be using as you can see i've got some slopes just heading off in one direction and then i've made another rock section which is attached to a ball joint piece just here and the idea is that that will just clip into place like so and then I can tilt that at a relevant angle so I can get it going into the actual rock work. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to have all of these plates on here or just use some of the curved tiles but hopefully this technique is going to look a little bit different from what I've done in the past which is what I'm trying to do with this entire mock. And here's the rock work and really pleased with how it's coming on. It's some of my favourite rock work I think I've ever made. The angles on this, that's tilting at that angle. This one here is coming out, tilting that way. It's going in numerous different directions. So, so yeah, really happy with how that's all coming on. On the back section here, I will just be building rock work straight up. And the reason for that is when you bring the camera around to the front here, you're not going to be able to see as much of it back there. And also when you've got the forges in the middle of the room, again, they're going to be taking away a bit of focus from that. But the rock work at the front here, I wanted to make sure that that did look really good. One other thing I need to do is put some lights underneath these plates here coming up and they'll be there ready for the forges. Because I want it to make it look like the forges are actually on when I uh, do the cinematic at the very end of the mock. And just checking in with a quick update here and put black wall on here and I will be putting some sort of like doorway over it, probably similar sort of design to what was on the living water section. The way I'm approaching this whole section at the below Mandalore is it's all in a similar sort of style. So I'm not sure if these walls are accurate. So apologies if they're not. I couldn't find any really good images of it. And even in the Mandalorian, the images that you see, uh, obviously the, the city's been destroyed so I don't know what was battle damage or what was natural rock work beforehand so I'm just going for it in my own style 
so I'm really pleased with how this is all coming along. There's a lot of uh, details and really weird angles going on within this entire section just here. And it's all using the ball joints. This is about 15 studs high and I'm going to be going up to, to 40 studs in high. So still got a lot, long way to go with that. I've run out of the 2A and the 2x10 plates, so I can't build any further along there with the supports. On top of here, um, at the moment, I think I'm about 21 bricks up on here. So I'm probably going to go about another seven or eight bricks high on here. And then I'll start building that big square thing for the building to slot into. But what I'm going to concentrate on next is trying to design and mock up the actual forges that are going to go in there. And I also still need to put the wires, the lights going through and coming out of the ground so I can make them look like they're lit up. And I think I've messed up yet again. I've got a feeling that rock work should be a lot higher up and it's actually a wall along the bottom and around the edges. I've re-looked at the images and re-watched the scene from the Mandalorian and it was only in the fall I was taking away images from the second to last episode of season three. And in season four, you see them all stood around the forge and it looks like there's smooth walls around the bottom. And I'm assuming that the rock work is above those um, smooth walls. So I've got a couple of choices. I can either waste a whole day's work and destroy that, which I don't really want to do because I'm really pleased with the rock work on that section, especially this bit just here. The options I have are I could try and peel this section off, which is not going to be easy. And how uh, fiddly a lot of that was, I don't think it will work. The third option is that I just use some creative license and just do the walls on this side and at the back there and then uh, just have the rock work going all the way up on that side. So I just need to decide how the best way forward is. I want this mock to be the best that it possibly can. So even if it does mean wasting a whole day's work, then I would sooner do that rather than uh, not have it as accurate as possible. So what I'm going to do in the meantime, I'm going to concentrate on making or prototyping the forges that are going in the middle here. The, one of the images I've got looks like there are three of them and they're all connected to a centre pillar. So that's the design that I'm going to be basing it on. And it's 10 past five Thursday morning and it is a trip to Dublin. Just on the outskirts of Dublin, there's a town called Blanchard's Town and there's a new Lego store. It's opening today, so we thought why not go up there. So let's get on the road and let's get there and see what it's like. Yes, ten, nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, five. five. Four, three, two, one, yay! Thank you very much. First thing picking up, go and check. So I picked up three power cups here, now I'm just sorting them into tidy stacks to maximise the filling. The alarm went off about five o'clock. I was in the car by ten past five and at Blanchard's Town Shopping Centre for around about 25 past five, I think it was, for the opening of the new Lego store there. I was second in line. The person ahead of me, they had been queuing up since the night before, so dedication there. Got a freebie bag for, I think it's about the first 20 or so people that went in the store and this was without even having to purchase anything. And a few sets in there. Again, I think it was all previous gift with purchases. As you can see, you got those two, which is a nice little touch. And then there is a bag with some pieces in. And it is the Shamrock. So another cool little build there. A nice little touch to give out to the people for all their craziness of staying up all night and getting up early for the start of it. So what did I get when I was up there? It was something I've been to get for a while, which was the gunship. And again, there were a load of gifted purchases. I did also get, and they're just pouring out, three picker brick cups, which is pretty much all masonry bricks. Got the House of the World 4 gift for purchase because it was the Lego store opening. There's the Lego store gift for purchase as well. Steamboat Willy, and then got the other three 
bigger brick cups. So these raw masonry bricks with the exception of a couple of little bits like the uh, cross sections there, which I'm going to be using on the mandrel mock. I'll chuck a load of the gold leaf elements in just to fill the gaps in on there. And the other set, when I went to Blanchestown, first of all, I picked up the Mercedes Speed Champions 2 set. However, I thought about it and I thought, actually, I didn't want that. I picked up the last second whilst I was at the till, purely because I'd realised I hadn't reached the threshold to get the gift with purchase. But there was a set I wanted, which they didn't have. So I went into Dublin Town Centre and I got it swapped over for the Avatar sets. So I'm really looking forward to doing an Avatar mock in the future. Be a long way away, but I thought, get the minifigures now whilst they're available so I don't have to pay silly money on the aftermarket. So yeah, really pleased there. So by getting the two sets and the power cups, we've got was it, six gift with purchases if you include the Shamrock, seven if you include the bag. So a nice little haul today. Not sure what I'm going to do with these gift with purchases. The Lego store one, I'm thinking I'm going to integrate that possibly into the underground section on Gotham. But the others are probably just uh, like Steamboat Wheel, I might just put that away as an investment set. And the same with the House of the World, unless there's some really cool elements in there that might come in useful in the future. But yeah, it was a good morning out, but uh, a long one. I started prototyping the actual forges that will be going in the Great Forge. And this is the first attempt that I came up with. And what I've done, I've used the modified plates here, which have got the curves on both both ends. And I've done two rows so you can connect them all together and make a loop. And then I've put it around the circular brick here, which is keeping it in perfect shape. I've then gone for a snot brick, cylinder, snot brick, cylinder, all the way around. Now with using the snot bricks, if you have two plates between two snot bricks, it lines up perfectly with the studs on a plate, brick or tile. So what I've done, I've done four rows on here so that I can have two rows per plate next to each other and they will clip on there perfectly and it keeps it all nice and firm. So this was the first one that I attempted. However, I wasn't 100% happy with it. I thought it was a little bit too thin and I wanted something a little bit thicker. So I ex expanded the size of the circle. This one, the gap from here to here is seven studs. As you can see, there's a round plate in the bottom there, which is six studs wide and there is a gap all the way around. And I'm much happier with this. Now this top section here, this is what's going to hold the entire forge up. There'll be three of these forges made and then there'll be, I think it's two connection points on each one. So I need to make sure I'm making this nice and sturdy. The gaps here, I will be putting a 45 degree slope piece. So one of these in light bluish grey and then that will hide the gap on there. But this is the first attempt at the larger size and really happy with how it's coming on. I've spent hours trying to get these bottom parts here uh, using different pieces and I've just ended up putting these 45 degree slopes on for the time being. But I will be continuing to work on looking for a different technique, something where I can get them a, a better angle and also get more of them in there. Due to the gap here, uh, the, the where they're, they're at this point at an angle, it's not possible to put an additional slope in there. There's just not enough room. So I want to carry on experimenting and then I'll hopefully come up with a better solution. So this is going to be suspended and then this bit will be going underneath. So when it's up, it will look like that, which is relatively act accurate to the source material. And again, with this, I've just used snot bricks and I'll be putting a one by one round uh, plate on here. One of the ones which has got the hole all the way through and hopefully I'll be able to connect some flame pieces through that. So there'll be 16 flames all the way around and I might even put an additional one on each of the corners there on the 45 degree bricks uh, slope sorry and again these I'll be changing over to the light bluish grey so once that's all together having three of those in the forge I think it's going to look really good so really happy with how that's coming on over the next week I'm going to be hopefully finishing the design of this making all three of these up including the centre support part but the other thing I want to do is get that rock work moved up on top of a wall within the, the Great Forge. It would be nice to get a little bit more building done this week. However, due to taking a day out to go to the opening of the Lego store in Blanchardstown, it did obviously take a day out of the Lego room. But it was well worthwhile having that day trip out. 
Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the update. If you have, please give us a big thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future content on the channel. And please share it with family and friends. Anyway, thanks for hopping on by. See you next time. Bye for now.